So my worlds collide with the EEOC, enforcement of Title I of the ADA, and the community of people with disabilities that have um, more or less educated me in the last 25 years. So coming to this ADA symposium is like an old home week for me. I know about 100 people here and have visited on the Riverwalk and in nooks and crannies and passed out cards and met many new friends. So it's a great um, networking opportunity for somebody in my position not only reinvigorated with the relationships, but I've gotten three bookings since I got here Sunday night of folks who were with DARS, who are with um, the DibTAC, and then a business owner from Oklahoma who had heard me at another symposium said, could I get on your calendar to do a webinar? Things like this is the best kind of outreach I could do. So. Um, folks who have known that I've been doing this for 15 years here at the government, seven years prior at the DibTAC. Prior to that, I was a human resource director at a state hospital. Those are the networking opportunities that are invaluable when the community of people with disabilities comes together like this. Yes, I am, and it's usually one of the more popular sessions because the I didn't know that factor will be the light bulbs going on and can they do that or you know the the notion of uh, at an interview somebody says are you involved in social media oh yeah yeah I use it all the time what's your Facebook password and then there's a lull in the conversation so we like to instill in folks where their rights are where their agreements are but also where the lines are in an employment um, application process and like to give them a, an understanding of their responsibilities Every PowerPoint presentation that the outreach people do at the EEOC, so there's 28 of us who comb the nooks and crannies of the country doing presentations um, for free, assisting businesses in how to stay out of trouble, all have two slides in every one of their diversity PowerPoints. One is, slide is of the 10 regional offices of the Dib Tax and how those regional offices service every state in the union. And th the other slide is, if you've never heard of J JAN, Job Accommodation Network, here's where to find free information that will assist you. Why we show it is we believe that in the interactive process between employee and employer who's asking for an accommodation, the employer now has evidence that they took a good faith effort to accommodate the individual with a disability. So it's a proactive, preventative issue. If the employee can't do the job, at least they tried and they went through these avenues to assist for help. So this network is perfect in the enforcement realm of the civil rights uh, protection that Title I of the ADA offers.